Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. And I have this little, little one with me today. This is one of my groups of my Borneo eared frogs. I've been breeding these guys for about seven to eight years now. I got my original group from the Frog Whisperer named Sean Harrington. So what I'm gonna go over with you guys today is you know, the most common plants used in a terra fauna setup. So we have questions all the time. Hey, bio dude, I just bought a crested gecko and I just got hooked up with the, with the uh, terra fauna substrate and I just, well, what plants are gonna work for me? So the reason I have the Borneos out is because these guys, we're actually keeping them on the fauna with the super grow drainage layer with a water area. And we've been having a lot of success with this and I just really wanted to show you guys what we've been doing with the fauna, what type of plants we're using. Um, like with the flora, you can, you have the ability to use some stunning, bright, beautiful plants. So just for fun over here, I wanted to show you guys my dumpies. So this is another tank that we've had set up for a while. We're using a drainage layer, all that good stuff. And you can see kind of the plants that we're using. So when you think of a really high humidity setup, you know, you don't really see some of the, some of the types of plants that we're using. We have some types of uh, bromeliads in there, which I'm gonna cover, but we also have a lot of hardier slash not as high humidity loving plants. So with that being said, let's get started. So like I mentioned before, bromeliads are one great option. So here is our mother, one of our mother plants, and here is uh, some of our offsets. So the offsets, you can, the offsets work great. You know, uh, like the fauna suggests, it is for biomes that have humidity spikes throughout the day, uh, but stay relatively, you know, medium, between 50 and 60% that have humidity spikes up to 75 to 80% for a short period of time. So your plants are gonna need to make sure that they can adapt to those different types of humidity changes. With the fauna, when you're keeping bromeliads, you wanna make sure that there's always fresh water in the axles here. And if you're gonna mount them, that they have good access to really good ventilation because if the air does stagnate, they will rot. One of the benefits of using fauna is you do have to use a drainage layer, but you have the ability to use big plants. So one of the first plants I would like to show you here, I mean, look at this beast. So we actually have one of these in the uh, dumpy enclosure, or sorry, the Borneo enclosure, which you can see over there on the right. Um, but I love these because A, they're broad leaves, two, they're sturdy, and three, you, they, they can grow in water, they can grow out of water, but the kicker is ventilation. This plant needs really, really, really good ventilation. So if you would try to keep it in a flora setup, you might be able to get away with it, no problem, but we've had issues with rot. Whereas if we put them in the fauna setup, they thrive um, as long as there's good airflow. But I also like using taller plants such as, such as these type of Dracenias and Diffenbachias right here. Uh, so as you can see, this one's tall and stalky, and we actually have one right here in the middle. So just to give you a little bit of an update, this is this plant right here, and that's what it turns into. Great, great terra fauna plant because it can handle the humidity, it can handle hot spots, and it will grow tall and wide, whereas your Diffenbachia will be very, very similar. You can also use these in Firma, which is great. When it comes to some of your terrestrial plants, you have a lot of options available to you. So like, like the flora, you can get away with using the, uh, the uh, Calathea lancifolia. You, know, you can also get, get, get away with using this beautiful Calathea right here. Again, these are ground covering plants that might get a little bit tall but they provide that little pop of color, which is what I love to see. But then there's also ferns. Depending on the type of critter you're setting up for, so if it's like a crested gecko or gargoyle gecko, you can absolutely get away with using some ferns. So just to, just to show you, you know, three of them, uh, we have, a, we have a, a version of the terrace fern here. So I showed you the other version of the terrace fern in the video before, that was in the backwees enclosure for the flora. But this one, you can also get away with the fauna. You just need to make sure that they don't dry out completely. Whereas we have the, this beautiful autumn fern right here. And then we also have what is called a staghorn fern. 
Now staghorn ferns get big and they're epiphytes like bromeliads. So you can mount this up in cork bark. You can mount it on your background, however you wanna grow it. But this is another great option for your terra fauna setups to give you a little bit of a differentiation as far as height and color. Then there are a couple of these bad boys. So this is a Sanservia snake plant. I love using these in firma, but I have a lot of customers that keep morning geckos and felsuma that love the tall version of these that have the big stalks and a lot of their morning geckos and their felsuma geckos will actually utilize them for cover. Um, and then you also have your earth stars. So earth stars will thrive in the fauna. They will do great. So it's one of those things you just want to make sure that you give them good airflow. Then we have, you know, your typical photonias and philodendrons right here. So all these will do great. The photonia comes in many different colors. So as you can see here, this is the green variety. You can see this, so this, uh, this bad boy right here, let's go over here to the dumpies. Check it out. Does this look familiar? Beautiful. You can see some of the air plants we have in here. The air plants are thriving. We actually have a, a bromeliad right there that's actually about to bloom. It's called a pink quill. And then we also have this stunning Tillandsia. And then we also have a beautiful bird's nest fern, which is planted right into the, uh, the mouth of the cork bark. Then we have the Alacasia poly. So you keep that right there, Christina. You can also see the smaller version of that poly right here. So the biggest thing with the, with the firma, or sorry, the fauna, you need to make sure that if you're gonna use larger plants like these, that you provide a good substrate depth. The, more ex the bigger the plant, the more extensive of a root system. The more ex extensive of a root system, the more dirt you're gonna need to maintain everything. When it comes to you know, mosses and other things like that, the show grade moss that I have and the aquatic mosses I have, unless you have a big water area that you're trying to replicate like, the, like I have with the Borneos, it's not going to do that great for you um, in most cases, especially if you're offering a hot spot. However, you can get away with using things like the, uh, like the, uh, the uh, sheet moss. Okay? So like I said, our sheet moss is 100% natural, doesn't have any dyes or any chemicals applied to it to make it last. So there is a lot of different options for you when you guys are using the, the terra fauna. So on the website, not only do we have terra fauna kits specifically to help have us pick out plants that work exactly for that type of biome to make your life easier, you need to look at your animal. How heavy is my animal? So if you have a big beefy crested gecko, we're talking a big crusty that's this big that likes to demolish and lay on everything, a small fern like this probably isn't your best option because of how thin these twigs are. It's just going to break it. However, when you're using a plant like a pothos, pothos is great. This plant will thrive in the fauna. This is one of the top plants that we always recommend to use. So it really comes down to what you want. But if you check out my website, we have the complete kits. You want to make sure that the plants can handle aeration. So if you click on the actual plant, it'll straight up tell you if it works for fauna, if it works for firma, if it works for these types of animals. And if you're not sure, simply reach out to us at our customer care email. Our plant inventory changes often. So we try to keep the website as up to date as possible. So again, guys, my name's Josh Halter, owner and founder of The BioDo. Today, I just briefly went over some of the common plants that we offer at TheBioDo.com that you can use in your terra fauna setup. So that's animals like crested geckos, gargoyle geckos, morning geckos, critters like that. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at CustomerCareAtTheBioDo.com. Feel free to uh, like, share, and subscribe. Come visit my store Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, and Saturday, 10 to 2. Do the bides.